Ladies and gents, welcome to the platform. And today I have a, a guest, uh, Os Pume Khetang. How are you doing today? I am blessed. And how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, you know, thank you so much for making time for this chat. Uh, yeah, you know, um, I know you're busy. But, you know, that's why we are here. We are here to find out about your life and all that you do. So my first question is, you know, can you just tell us about Pume? You know, uh, who are you and what do you do? For those that may not know. Okay. Uh, my name, oh, I was born as Pume CBC uh, in KZN, KwaZulu Natal, in Freyet. Uh, and I grew up there with my grandmom and my grandparents, like all my grandparents, my aunts and all the other cousins. Then at, when I became a teenager, I had to go and live with my parents in Umlazi, which is in Durban. Um, yeah, that's who Pume is. And Pume is employed. She's got a job, eight to five job. I work for one of the biggest hospitality hotel group in, mm. the, in the world, actually. Uh, so I work there as a sales manager. And besides that, I am a, I will say entrepreneur. I will say I am a God servant and I am Uma Mufundisi and I am a mother. Mm, wow, that's a lot. So how do you balance being, you know, a mother, uh, you know, uh, a, a wife, uh, you know, being a, 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 you know, involved in church and also being an entrepreneur? Like, how do you balance all that and obviously being an employee? I thank the Lord that my children are older now. My first one is turning 29 now in April. My second one is 27 and my last one is 18. So the both boys, they're out of home. So I don't really have to nest them and look after them that much. But I'm still a mother because I still have to give them emotionally and spiritually support. Uh, I gain my strength from the Lord and my husband is supporting me throughout all these things that I'm doing. Mm, mm, okay, no. Very, very well put. So, you know, I know obviously, you know, I'm part of the interviews about, you know, uh, being a pastor's wife and there's a lot of dynamics there involved. You know, I didn't know that there was so much drama around church, you know? So can you tell us, you know, how do you go through a typical day of being like a pastor's wife? How do you deal with the dynamics that come and the politics that come with it? Okay, for me, Angela, it might differ from other pastor's wives because with me and my husband, we're still serving under the bishop and the senior pastor, okay? So I'm not the first lady of the church mm. in that, if, if I can put it that way. So um, my dynamics at church is I'm a worshiper. I do the motivation at church. I am a youth uh, leader. So I teach the youth from the age of 12 to the to 20, I look after those girls to make sure that they understand what to be a woman, how to carry yourself if you're a woman. So for me, it's not as tough, if I may say, as the other first ladies where they are seen as the owners of the church or as like the leaders of the church themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, you know, I understand that with you, you know, um, you ha you've had a special gift since the age of 10. Uh, yeah. Tell us about that, that gift that you have. I wouldn't say the gift was since the age of 10. I think the gift, you are born with the gift. So mm. I was born with the gift and it was only discovered at the age of 10. Um, the gift that I have is for being a seer or a prophet in, in a, I'm using these words just because of lack of other words to use. Um, but then at that age, it was then initiated for me as Isangoma because mm. the grandparents, that's, that's what they knew. So they initiated it in a way of how they knew it. Okay, so now how do you then balance? Because I, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong, but in my understanding, you know, um, when you're a Christian and then also when you um, have a calling, you know, of Obusangoma, it, it's kind of like conflicts. So how, how do you then balance the two? Or am I not understanding it correctly? Um, I wouldn't say it conflicts because a gift comes from God. Regardless mm -hmm. of what the gift that you have, it comes from God. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the only challenge or what we can discuss here is how was it initiated? 
It was initiated as a Sangoma, like I've said, my grandparents, they only knew how, when, if a child sees things and those things that happen, or if the child or a person talks like the person that has passed, now they only know how to initiate it in Ubu Sangom. Mm. Then when I was growing up, I said to myself, now let me take control of my life because Ubu Sangoma was, I don't want to say it was imposed, but it was done because of the family. Now I am taking control of my life. Now I am taking Christ as my savior. So I wouldn't say it's a conflict, but I was, because I do not practice both. For me, it's, mm. I'm not doing it both. When I accepted Christ, my yesterday was forgiven. My sins were, were washed away, if, if it was a sin. So everything that I did when I was young, when I did not know Christ, it has been forgiven. It's the past. Mm. But I still live with the gift. So I went for deliverance. Mm, okay, so, so that now... I can be a born again. Yeah, so that I can be a born again and accept Christ as my savior. Okay, all right. So just to understand you, so now you're more of a prophet than a sangoma. The sangoma is in the past. Now you're more of a prophet because, yeah. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even say as Andile as a prophet because I don't like to give, I don't like to give my gift a, a, a title. Mm. Because for me, a prophet is a person that sits and make appointments and people, they pay that person to come and tell them their future. Mm. For me is when the message comes, as much as we are, I'm sitting here and I'm talking to you and I receive a message by anyone, maybe the message is about you or it's a message is about somebody else. If I receive the message now, I have to make sure that I'm understanding the message and how am I gonna put the message forward to the person that I have seen or the person that has to receive this message because again I cannot be going around just telling people what I have saw or what I've had heard or what I'm told that's going to happen in their lives because I do not know how strong they are I do not know how they, what they believe in or who they believe in so what I only do now I pray about it mm. for, wow, clarification, yeah. for, for clarification for more, I will say for more clarification then I can go to the Obviously, there are other prophets in the church, within the church, there are prophets. Then I will go to the other prophet, of which I've got one that is very close to my heart that I normally go to, to say, this is what I have said. Please pray with me. Let me take this message to now to Andile because it belongs to Andile. So mm -hmm. that when I get to Andile again, it's not as heavy and it's more clearer mm -hmm. because I don't want to come and say to you, Andile, you, something this bad is going to happen to you and then you start panicking and then you live in the panic because i have said so mm, mm, no understood yeah. so i have to i have to i have to be in control of my message yeah no i can just imagine your life must be very very interesting <laughs> so yeah moving and, you know, on. it is it is very very interesting it's it, actually not interesting it's very scary because you see things that they don't belong to you. You hear things that no one understands what you're hearing. Even if you can try and explain, you can't because you'll be sitting maybe nicely in a function with people and things, they start happening. You start seeing things. And the only thing that I do, I just get up, I get to my car, I leave because I don't know how am I gonna address this. Mm. So I'm in the journey. I'm in the journey now of finding out how do I do this? How do I without how, how do I pass the message without offending people? Mm, mm. Yeah, I know. Without without offending the, the 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 traditional way and without offending the Christian way. Because funny enough, in a Christian way, I get more judged, harshly judged. Mm by them of the gift that I have, then I am being judged in a traditional way. Mm. Mm. I don't get judged in a traditional way at all. Instead, they are helping me or they tell me to say, we're going to support you. Tell us what you need. 
and unfortunately I have accepted, not even unfortunately, fortunately I have accepted Christ. So I have to follow the Christ way. And yet I get harshly judged by my own Christian family. Mm. So what's the way forward? You know, how do you move forward from that? I continue to pray. Remember when I was doing initiating, it took, it was a process. Mm. I didn't just wake up and then it happened. It was a process. So even now, it's a process. I am praying. I am surrounding myself with prayerful, prayerful people, the pastors, mm. women of God. I, I'm really, really stuck. Honestly speaking, I'm stuck in the hard place, in a rock and the hard place. Mm. Mm. Yeah, no, I know. You know, I. I, I think obviously, you know, you figured out, you know, you're surrounded by people that know what to do. And yeah, you know, I can imagine, you know, and it's only through these conversations that, you know, we learn more about spirituality and, and you know, our places in Africa as, as, as Christians and as Africans. So yeah, you know, thank you yeah. so much for, for giving me that answer. Um, yeah, but moving on, you've got this movement called Borg. Let's talk, right? Yeah. <laughs> Is it Borja? That's is it my the, baby. Is it a Sangoma Borja? Is it like the Borja? Or is it the... <laughs> I knew you got to go there. I knew it. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you for the platform. And thank you for the question that I can clarify that. Most of the people, especially, I'm going to go back again, especially Christians, the minute they know my past, of which I'm the one who tells them, mm. At the minute I tell them my past of being a Sangoma, they associate Borla with that. And it has nothing, zero to do with my gift. Mm. Borla is to birth. Mm. You have something that is bothering you, that has been bothering you for years, that you haven't shared with anyone. We are bored. Mm. So mm. it's all about talking. It's all about us saying lezazito, all those things that isn't a pagatigit that we have never forgive ourselves on or heal from. So we talk about those things. Mm, okay, so you know the the movement itself. Like, what kind of people are involved? Is it for for young people? Is it for girls? Is it for boys? Like, what's what's the movement about? The movement is up when it started. It it's, it actually it was started by my husband. It was not a movement movement then. It was started by Uba Khetang. It was not a movement. We were sitting as couples, and we decided to say, you know, if it, in our marriage we have a problem. I can't go home was busy and go and tell what Khetang does to me. Khetang cannot do the same and go to his family and tell what I do. So who do we speak to? So we decided let's speak amongst our, ourselves because these guys are friends. They travel this journey, they know. We are friends as girls, let's talk about this. Then I decided, so we used to use to, 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 do, to do it, sorry, as couples. Then I decided, let me take it out to the community, to the society, to say, let's bother. Then when it started, it was mostly women. Then women started bringing their girls. The mother started bringing their girls. The mother started bringing their boys. Mm. And then I started seeing a huge number of homosexuality people coming in mm. to say, we, we need this too. We need this because in the churches, they don't want us. In the community, they don't want us. In our families, they don't want us. Where should we go? We can't, we can't go and attend women's conference alone. We can't go and attend men's conference alone. Mm. So we are here now because here we are not pushing the gender of Christianity or of spirituality. We're pushing the gender of let's heal. That is why our slogan called Borla Let's Talk Conference of Healing. Mm, mm. No, uh, you know, that's very important work, you know, that is needed in our community. And, you know, we are thankful that, you know, uh, you know, 
people have plat platforms and you know safe spaces like that because i think you know as africans we we do need to you know uh, a space where we can talk about our issues so yeah you know moving yes. on about about also you know a part of your life is that i understand that you know and you touched a bit uh, a bit about it earlier uh, your entrepreneurship journey um you know you're involved in the events um uh, market and all that stuff so can you tell us you know what does you know pume uh, do what do you do as a, as an entrepreneur as an entrepreneur i do a lot of other small things um i do the, the event that you're talking about is called Shase, which is my clan surname, my clan name, uh, mm -hmm. where my husband and I, we do events. Mm -hmm. We do the same conferences that I'm talking about. We, we are the middleman between the client and the venue. So we go to the venue and say, okay, this is what you want to do. We can do it for you. We, you give us your spec. We go and negotiate for you. We go and choose the venue that you would like to have and it's gonna be accommodative of your guest. Then we, I also do sell water, which is alkaline water. Mm. I sell that water and I, 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 I'm, I'm involved in, like I said, in all small things that they're just gonna make me busy and just make sure that I give back to the community. I even run a shoe school drive that I mm. do every year on my birthday month, which is February. My birthday was mm. on Monday. So mm. what I then do is I ask my friends not to give me gifts, but to buy me a pair of shoes and give me sanitary towels, roll on toothpaste so that I can go and give out to the orphan kids. Mm -hmm. That's amazing work. That's amazing work. And, and thank you so much for that. Um, you know, is there anything that you just want to, you know, uh, a message that you want to just want to put across there to, to everybody that's watching this that follow you? All I can say to everyone out there, let's remember that God is still God, regardless of what is happening, regardless what you're going through right now in your life. He is still Jehovah. He's still sitting on the throne. And I always say, he, he, I mean, he says in his word, cast all your burdens to me. How do you cast those burdens to him? By calling his name, by trusting in him and let go of everything that you think it is bothering you because yeah he knows better and let's just be kind to one another mm -hmm. wow uh kind words wise words we appreciate your time and yeah thank you so much for sharing uh your story with us uh and yeah good luck with everything good luck with the with the drive with the kiss that's important word man enjoy the rest of your day Thank you so much. Same to you. Stay blessed. Okay, man. Bye. Thank you. Bye.